You get do you get a comment like always get comments of like oh they just hate men and blah, blah, blah. Yes. <laughs> like the probably comment section for this might be like that. It has improved my life in ways that I never thought would happen. You know, for the first I I'm not going to get emotional. It's fine. But for the first time in my whole adult life, I can financially support myself. I talked about crying in the port of Lou. I talked about working with drug dealers, working with um, ex-cons, working with someone that had done um, time for murder, and then I was on site in a field in the middle of nowhere with this person. That day where I finally phoned up that credit card company and said, right, I want to pay that off. They went, are you, are you sure? That's like a grand... Yep, yep, do it. That freedom is amazing. The, the major thing for me as well, which, again, a lot of guys don't seem to understand these, ladies also want to have a family so here we are series six i have no idea what episode it is but it doesn't really matter anymore because we've been doing them for so long and i have two new fantastic guests and we wanted to bring both of these guests in today uh, because it's win <laughs> international <laughs> international <laughs> women's day on the 6th of march am i correct jack you are correct my researcher is correct so um, two new guests. We've got Pixie from Pixie Heating, and we've also got Michelle from mm -hmm. She Who Dares. Yep. And basically, what I wanted to do is bring you two in to talk about your sort of introduction into trades, how you got into trades, and giving us a bit of backstory as to how you came to be where you are now, and just give people listening and watching an insight into sort of your perspective on being a lady in trades. For me, I don't really feel like we should be highlighting it all the time as ladies and men but I also still realise that there is still quite a long way to go for it to be a normalised thing within trades so I think it's yeah. really important having you two on to sort of discuss it and also sort of encourage other ladies into trades because I feel like people go on there's a trade shortage and stuff like that and I feel like unless we actually get people on from all different types of backgrounds we're never going to find a way of bringing other people through so who shall I start with tonight Jack? Who should we go with? Eeny, meeny, miny. <laughs> 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 Who would, uh, should, should, should I just put it out? Who would like to tell their story first or t talk about... It's not always about themselves, but it's <laughs> There sort you of, go. <laughs> yeah. All right, go on. I'll go first. Steve so... I'll try and keep it short. How would you like it? Hey? Uh, Pointy's here. Pointy's here. Bring him in. I'd like a picture of him and listen to Pointy! Hello! How did you get in? Yeah. Yes! I love this. Look, he's it's in. Great. Come and get yourself on camera, mate. Oh, come around the back. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. Hi, hi. How are you doing? How are you doing? Pointy, Pointy. 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 Yeah, yeah, well, on, let's do it. Yeah. 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 I've, I've got to get back, unfortunately. Oh. You know, childcare duties. Uh. Uh, they oh, you've had me at hello. I oh, know they call me. Pa they call it parenting, uh. but I still call it childcare. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. we'll should we dive dive back in then? Where was I? Uh, you were about literally. to tell us how wonderful you were. Oh right. Okay. Uh. Well, I'll take two seconds. So, sort of, um, <laughs> give us give us your background. What you right. sort of did. Yeah, don't take us right back. Don't take us to sort of... When I was born. Well, when I was four years old, I had an epiphany that I wanted to be an engineer and then I'd have my own pockets. No, not the case. So <laughs> just just give us, for everybody that's sort of listening and watching, just give yeah. us the backstory okay. and sort of tell us about your journey as to where you are now and yeah. the types of things that you're doing now uh -huh. and that you want to do in the future. All right, okay, Sam. I like that. It's a bit like a job interview. Right. Um, <laughs> right, I'll take you back to... Tell, tell me something <laughs> I don't know about yeah. you. Um, I guess we'll start at uni, did a geography degree um and then weirdly enough went to film school in america um how, how would you go from geography oh, it's, it's ridiculous. To, a, to a film school I, I was really quiet as a kid yeah and then i just got to 18 i was like i want to be an actor so i went and i was like i'm not going to <laughs> london i yeah. went to america yeah. anyway came home and i was like crap i've got no money i'm skint yeah. um typical sort of yeah no one performing arts yeah, yeah no one picked me up in hollywood which was the grand plan <laughs> i wasn't like instantly on on like yeah tv or um casting a film yeah. so uh, a mate of my brother's was like oh you did geography it's kind of related to geology um there's this job on a landfill site they need yeah. freelance like engineers um do you want to do it and i was like no i haven't got a clue what that's about mm -hmm. and then he told me what the date rate was and i was like i'm on it i'm doing <laughs> it let's do this acting what acting? yeah i was like i can do this um <laughs> so i turned up on site it was this massive folder i was doing materials testing for construction so basically 
sit in between the contractor and the environment agency and then the client. Are they as bad as they? Yeah, they're horrendous. Um, It's blagged like the first couple of weeks and then was just like, do you know what, I can do this. I can get get here. So I worked in that industry on and off for about five to seven years. I love that. that You just blagged your way in. You're like, after two weeks, yeah, I can do this. I I (laughs) I honestly hadn't got a clue. And they could tell. There's probably people that have studied for years, like struggling (laughs) somewhere. Yeah, Yeah. what are they doing? I, um, I, I, yeah, just the terminology I was using was just all incorrect, but... I was keeping my head above water whilst underneath, flapping yeah. like mad. Um, did that for five to seven years, real small industry. So as soon as you start working, your name gets out there, you constantly get work. It was great because it was only nine months of the year because okay. it's muck shifting. So yeah. only when the weather's good. M- money was phenomenal. So I was able to travel when taking time off and then do a little bit of film yeah. work in between. So how, how would anybody that's listening to this now get into that type of industry? It's a bit of a dying trade. Like landfills are dying out. Um, but materials what's, testing... What's replacing it then? We're just recycling more, but I think okay. they're going to come back. They yeah. are going to come back. Um, if you wanted to get into like materials testing within the construction world, then yeah, I'd say like geography, geology is a good way into that. Mm. Um, but you probably could get an apprenticeship, which I'm sure labs yeah, have com- those. Companies taking on apprentices. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I worked alongside, so obviously we were constructing these massive holes in landfill, which um, are quite technical, to be fair. Mm. They're not just a hole. And um, I worked alongside a engineer who yeah. was setting out things and then surveying the job yeah. and um one thing i've always wanted to know and uh, you might know the answer to this, how do they decide where they're going to put a landfill uh, I, how does how does uh, do, do you know what i mean because it's not just yeah. oh just plonk it there like think, how, how does that even come about i think it's how cheaply they can get the land mm. but also a lot of them are disused old quarries so, right. the, so the book's already gone because the last okay. thing you want to be doing is going out and digging, digging a hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got to be... So it's quarries, predominantly old quarries. Mm. Um, it works alongside an engineer and then the industry was changing and I was like, oh, I could really do with something that's going to be long-term and a bit better paid at that point. Mm. Um, so again, I was like, I can do this. Went down to London, did a week's course on how mm. to set out in... A, I'm ashamed going to say this. In a hallway and <laughs> in a like a college yeah. and then uh the week later um got a job i think got my first job was on the nottingham tram right, with okay. vinci taylor yeah. woodrow so a massive yeah, project yeah, yeah. um i literally went to the interview and th- uh, the tram had gone through that many engineers that they were mm. desperate so i was in good stead and, and the guy was like <laughs> yeah. i've only got a week's worth of training yeah oh, welcome well, to my work that was it the guy was like um i could read drawings because i'd been in so i was halfway there yeah um my senior engineer was like you've got two weeks sink or swim and i was like no, okay no then, yeah. let's take this let's take this and i had a really good um senior engineer who knew how, what shit i was in basically mm. and he guided me through and he taught me so much more than I ever learned on that course. Mm. So that was my transition into proper engineering. Um, so I did Nottingham Tram, then moved on to housing uh, sites, um, doing drainage, roads, footings for housing. What's, what's your favourite bit that you've done, engineering-wise? Um, what would you, if, if somebody said to you, like, tomorrow... You've got to go it, back. Yeah, what would you... Well... What was one of the favourite things that you worked on? I'd say housing sites, because you've got every trade on a housing site. Mm. Um, I built petrol stations for a while, which was really cool, but that was more like the project management side of things. But I think housing sites, because you've got plumbers, brickies, Mm. I love the dynamics of working with different trades and like seeing what they do and everyone's got different personalities. So I think housing, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. How come you, so obviously, like, it's really odd because you have completely blanked it. So I don't, I don't even know how to sort of come back to that and say, how did you end up in anything? But... How come you maybe didn't go into the more standard types of trades? Was that ever an option for you? Did you ever think about, you know, plumber, electrician or heating yeah. and ventilation or anything like that? Was it no, just... I literally fell into the construction industry in that world. Mm. Um, and for me, engineering, you, every day is different. Mm. And I, I imagine it is in a trade as well, like it's constant challenges. Um, but for me, it was just a natural, you know, I fell into construction and then I just kind of went with it. Um, mm. As a kid, I think, and this is quite important, I reckon, for girls, you don't get exposed to these jobs. Yeah. You don't know that you can do them. Mm. So you don't 
do with them. Yeah. Um, everyone I've spoken to, every other woman that's been in a trade has been like, oh, my dad was in a trade and I loved it, or I fell into it. Mm. No, one person has gone, oh, at school, someone said I could be a plumber. We, I think <laughs> in the, Jack will correct me on this, I think in the whole time we've been doing this, I think there's probably maybe three that got offered to do it at school. Or, or, or found their way through school and somebody said, why don't you go and do this? Yeah. That's one thing Mad. that everybody comes up against on here is uh, at my school, it was always, well, the only thing you're going to be good at is to go into the army. That's the only thing that they actually uh, okay. said to me because they were like, well, you know, education wise, you're, you're not the, the best. Yeah. I said the only other thing really we could offer is to go into the army. There was never an option to go into trade. That's interesting. So Our school just used to push higher education, so A-levels, university, yes, yeah. and yeah, that's the path you end up on because yeah. you just don't know this my, exists. We didn't even get to do classes. Yeah. You know, um, my best friend did electrics yeah. for during the GCSEs and because she was the only <coughs> girl in the class and felt really awkward, she quit. Because yeah. <sighs> like design technology, you can do it as a GCSE, but you don't really, it's not really an A-level. No. I've never heard of anybody doing a no. design technology A-level. Yeah, And surely if you want to get people to become engineers or go into chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, anything like that, you've got to be offering these types of courses. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It's pre-social media as well. So you weren't, mm -hmm. you, I never saw anyone, mm. you know, if you well, even on an advert yes. for a construction company, yeah. you'd never see a lady no. on an advert. Or walking That's, past site. How yeah. many times you walk past site? You just don't see yeah. women. So I think the stereotype back in the day, which there was a lot of it was, a lady would walk past the building site and be like, mm. "Oh, I do yeah. I still yeah. exist, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do you know what yeah. I mean? But now, obviously, the, the great thing about it is you can flip the roles around now. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Like yeah. that to some guys and get yeah. your, get your own back. But you see me driving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. One fat lady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that too. But um, I mean, so what? What would you say then needs to change to get more ladies into trades then? To be, to be sort of around that from an earlier age, what needs to sort of happen? Apart from obviously having a family member that goes into a trade and then sort of going, oh, you know, you've got a niece or something like that. Why yeah. don't you try this? What needs to happen for it to be I more think, normalised? I think we're getting there. Like, I don't know how you feel, but I think social media, um, there's some amazing women out there that are putting out their stories, what mm. they're doing. So I think that is going to filter through. The hard thing that I always struggle with is I say for my experience like 80% has been amazing mm. there's maths here but should be good as an engineer <laughs> the 20% left no to, I'll, I'll swing this I'll say 90 10 10% of the industry is really dark mm. and is really hard for women really yeah. hard and I think as much as I try and encourage women to get into the industry I also struggle with which is kind of how my story started and I guess helped with others through like my YouTube videos is this stuff exists mm. in the industry that you will come up against. It yeah. is incredibly hard, but we can only change this if we get more women in. Mm. I don't think it's a case of, right, let's go onto a building site, a trade and, and sort out the issues because... Well, it's not your job to sort... I don't feel like it's a lady's job to go on and have yeah. to sort anything out. I feel like that site should sort it or the people that run the site. The business, the culture. Should, yeah. should, it should be it's top. The culture yeah. that the needs culture. to shift. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's, yeah, as you said, it is very toxic, can be very toxic. Yeah. And that mm. side needs to go. Yeah. I mean, I mean the, the one bit that really frustrates me about all of this is when I'm on social media and you'll get the comment from a guy who'll come on and go, oh, it's absolute rubbish. There's none of that on the site I work on. And it's always like, it's the same with racism, with whatever bullying yeah. or whatever. There's there's never any of that on anybody's site. But it must exist because people like yourselves say, well, this is this is my experience. But then you yeah. get shot down saying, well, that's not true. Well, the, the, uh, on that, I did a event a couple of years ago for women in construction. Mm. Um, and there was all these big companies. I won't name them, but the big companies. Yeah. and the, um, the big house builders. No, not not in housing. Like yeah. we're talking bigger, like Siemens and companies like that, or uh, yeah, on the construction side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're trying to get me to name them. Right? <laughs> I won't pull them out. <laughs> no, I, I, it's, it's not about. I, I don't feel like we need to like. And this is the thing: if you start calling companies out, yeah, they retreat. Yeah, and I feel like you have to try and bring yeah. people with you rather than just yeah hammering yeah. people. Don't get me wrong; if something's really bad, yeah, then you sort of need to 
Really yes, to needs to be exposed. Somebody's attention, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Education, not condemnation. Yeah. 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 But I went to this event, gave a talk, and afterwards there were all these companies that were saying, we're getting loads of women in construction. It's amazing. We've got this team of women. Um, they're doing all sorts of roles. And then after my talk, which was kind of like, this is my experience, quite a few girls would come over to me and they'd be like, oh, we'll work for this company. And I'm really glad that you were honest about your experience of like crying in a port loo etc. <laughs> We've all been there. Um, and I was like, oh, well, hold on. Your directors just stood up and said how amazing the culture is in your company and they're supporting women. And they just go, mm. well, yeah, but last week, Dave got his dick out in the canteen and... Uh, yeah <laughs> this is what this whack. is what and, and i'm like i know because i've had that yeah. i was like oh yeah that's pretty common and but she's like yeah but, but it, should, it shouldn't yeah it but shouldn't, these big guys yeah. are going oh we've sorted the culture and it's not and it's like you don't you, listen you don't want to focus on the real negative because we're not going to get more women in it's yeah. it is just the 10 percent. Yeah. but it doesn't need to be the 10 percent. I, th- I think part of it maybe with with guys on site is they probably feel if you know, especially if ladies are in management positions as well, oh, the cultural chat, I'll never be able to say anything. I think there's that fear from a guy side. Yeah. Rather than actually supporting ladies and saying, well, actually, I'm with you, yeah. and then everybody benefits from it. I yeah. think there's a lot of that. There's a lot of guys that are, like, fearful of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing I've sort of noticed about these bigger companies, there's not many women in positions where actually they can influence yeah. the, the yeah. culture downwards. Yeah. So there's 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 yeah. now a lot more engineers and a lot more plumbers and stuff like yeah. that, and I think that's fantastic. But I feel like there needs to be the likes of you that go, actually, I want to become a manager. Yeah. And then you yeah. can sort of say, well, this is how it is. Well, the the guy things. the guy that was in charge, so she said, and I was like, oh, have you reported this or the whatever? And she was like, well, um, our head of like HR diversity and helping the team mm. is a guy. So I was like, mm. what woman wants to go up to their manager? And say and that some like, guy's <laughs> showing his, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. difficult it's to hard, be able to discuss your feminine health issues with a guy. With a dude. <laughs> but, but even, <laughs> even, but even uh, there must still be that slight fear as well of if I say this, what's the repercussion yeah, for Yeah, I get me? that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and obviously guys are a bit more confrontational. I find so yeah. like, oh, well, if he's going to do that, well, you know. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you might be like, well, actually, don't want to call this out because maybe he's going to go back and tell him, and then I'm going to get, you know. Yeah. And it shouldn't. It shouldn't be like that. I feel like it definitely should be, you know. And that that was the one funny thing actually that I did notice. Do you remember the, uh, was it the period officer that they uh, <laughs> that they that they uh, took on in Scotland? Yeah. And it was a guy. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, it's stuff like this still happens. How can you have a period officer that's a guy that's never had a period? And then because there was such an uproar, they actually had to get rid of him, but they had to pay him off. Yep. I think it was about £30,000 or something like that. We'll we'll check it after the show and actually have a look. But stuff like that, I feel like that's where we still have a long way to go. So when people stand up and say, you know, it's changed or this has changed, rather than them saying that, they should go to the crowd and say well what do you think yeah I, I think though to give credit where it's due i've worked for a lot of, i've worked for tier one down to you mm. know jack who's got a few tradies whatever mm. um i think smaller companies are doing better mm. i think you know personal owners where there's not this huge system and don't get me wrong i've not worked for a tier one um of late so that it could have the culture could have mm. changed um but yeah i think there's this lower end um, family-run businesses where I've I've worked with so many awesome male allies mm. like that have just supported me when needed. Um, pretty much, to be honest with you, I've been freelance engineer for seventeen mm. years. So like, like, that, like that guy you mentioned at the Nottingham Tram yeah, project. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. And those people exist, and they <coughs> make they make up that swinging it to 90% yeah. of it being awesome. That don't treat you any differently. Correct. Like you are the apprentice, yeah. like you are the mate in the van, yeah. like mm. you're a co-worker yeah. as opposed to mm. come along, sweetie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think a lot of yeah. guys don't realise as well in your line of work is when you knock on somebody's door. <gasps> yes! Where's where's the plumber? Oh, <laughs> you know, I imagine it? you got some when good When I ones. was an apprentice, <laughs> it was beautiful. The fella I was working with is clearly a man. <laughs> over six foot big bushy beard gruff voice yeah. dude so yeah. he's knocked on the door hello mate problem with the boiler yeah 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 come on in and then there's my skilly little thing bright pink hair carrying the tool you know tool yeah. bag the bloke legitimately held onto the door 
Look me up and down. Look me up and down. Oh, oh you're a woman. <laughs> I went, yep. What's the last time I, I can't. I can't believe. I mean, even if I was shocked, I can't believe that that actually. Oh yeah. It's like that, doesn't Every single it go, yeah. day. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it, it, it's a shock. Yeah, I mean, guys, guys <laughs> as well don't actually realise that. To to us, we'd probably be like, uh, they don't realise having that sort of question every day about you know, oh, it's a woman. Are you going to be good at the job? Because yes. that's yeah. that's how it comes across. Like if a guy walked in, it was like, oh, you're a guy. Yep. I think after five or six days, you stop being like, I'm a guy. What's the matter with yeah. me? You do get know? used to it though. I kind of like. I think after two or three years. Do you not? No. I think no. you're because you, cause you're. It's just probably. I'm part of a bigger team normally on site, so I think I don't know. I feel like between all of you, because all the ladies that have come on the show share a very similar experience. I feel like if there was some sort of, I don't know, like a group or something where you all come together, yeah, and there's a bit more strength in numbers. I feel like that's the type of thing that yeah. There is, but ultimately, I think there was one girl. Um, the story was really bad. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's so, I'm thinking of yeah. Really, and and what happens um, is rather than it get dealt with in the right way, mm. they remove the woman, and then the woman is made of the issue, and they've been mm. through something quite traumatic, and the guy stays in the job. And and I'm talking really, I'm talking like this should be a police issue. Mm. This is really serious. What's happened? And then that woman then has to think about what happens. To but her then, career. but the, yeah, I mean yep. the, the other the other flip side on that as well is if you've got other colleagues, other colleagues are going to think that you're the issue if you're the one that's been removed from the yes. situation. Yeah, you get put somewhere yeah. else. Then you're yeah. going to sit there thinking, well, yeah, are people talking about me. Is it yeah, is it yeah. my am I the issue yeah. when actually you've done nothing wrong? Yeah. I just think companies don't know how to deal with it. It's not necessarily, I just don't think they, I think they panic and go, oh, mm. it's like when I was pregnant and working on site. Mm. Like, honestly, it was I mean, the I, funniest I, I, thing. With that, I have just hit that beautiful perimenopause stage. Oh, right, yes. So, so yeah, yeah, that's lovely. You yeah, know, the rage, the sweats, the lunacy, <laughs> the brain fog. Yeah. <laughs> And when you're doing that in your thick uniform and all yeah, that, yeah, sweating, yeah, yeah. I, I was like 37 weeks pregnant. I, I, I think where oh, that comes concrete. from is you get a bit of the American culture that oh, I've lost my baby, so I'm going to sue you. So they're panicking, thinking, yeah, oh, true. anything, anything goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the same if you were to go for a pregnancy massage. Like my wife's pregnant at the moment, and they're all like, oh, I've got to ask you 49 million yeah. questions just in case. Yeah. So people are just, I think, yeah, that, that petrifies, especially if you've got a guy who's a manager. He's like. Uh, yeah. women's oh, issues I don't know what yeah. I'm dealing with it we, but this is again why I say it's important to get ladies into those positions because if a guy can't deal with it he'll be able to say well actually I've got somebody that's it's been there and that's been there that it. can do that and then yeah. the guy actually feels better that he's sorted the issue rather than being like just I'll ignore it it'll go yeah. away but it is hard because when you say about getting more women in I think the stats at the moment are 11% in the women in mm. women in the industry and only of that 11% is not point no is it no it's 1% mm -hmm. so of that 11 only 1% of women are on site yeah. mm. but, how many are actually yeah but, on the tools waving the screwdriver yeah. around yeah yeah but this is the other thing that frustrates me is you'll get well there's only 11% and some people go well it's only 11% and you've got I don't know, 3% that management, that's a good ratio. And you're like, well, it is. But then at the same time, if it if it's to get any better, it's not. No. So no, it, needs, yeah. it needs to be. You know, like, I always get these people where they talk about, like, diversity figures and all these different things, and you can skew it to, to suit your narrative. But obviously, if people are actually saying it's not right or it needs to change, mm. and those people are women... You can't say, well, you don't know what you're talking about because yeah. you have to listen to the people that are working for you. Yeah. If I managed to do night school and an apprenticeship and only met one other woman doing it. Yeah. Mm. I've only come across, when you see that other woman on site. Or like cats. Yeah, you, you like, like sniff <laughs> round each other. Oh, like, oh, you're, this are you really a woman? Yeah. Are we, is this like a mirror? Like, Can we be friends? Yeah. <laughs> you know, do we hate each other because you are it? Yeah. But mm. it is getting better now. I know like the big project HS2, the, you see when you're driving, you the, see the, the rail industry had a real big push. Yeah. I, I, I've been dealing with them for 17 years and I've noticed a big, big yeah. there's a lot more female engineers now, which I think is, it's they're, they're having a real good push with yeah. it. And I just feel like some other industries are still. Yeah. I think I, with construction anyway, there's that huge problem with getting apprentices in anyway. Yeah. 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 So yeah. what was the statistics from Gas Safe? Oh, it's like fifty-five yeah, yeah. percent of them, or something, were age over fifty. Yeah. So yeah, in twenty years, 
going to be and fixing the, up and boilers. The, and yeah, the apprentices that are coming through, I can't remember the exact figures, but there's a big proportion that just they get to a year or they get to two years and they drop out. Sack it off, yeah. I nearly quit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got to my second year and I couldn't afford to live, mm. you know, because the apprentice wage, although it was very generous from my employer, it was not enough to live. Yeah. Mm. Especially as... Oh, you imagine, you imagine doing it now with yeah. inflation and all the rest of it. I, not I chance. Yeah. £3.30 an hour, mm. it was when I started. You, you can't do that. Yeah. What, anybody know what it is now? I, don't, I think engineering is engineering's not bad. I don't mm. think it's bad because I think... Um, I think some industries, because there is a, such a severe we, yeah, shortage, such a they shortage. are starting to think... And you're coming on and actually you're not really apprentice after two or three years. You're mm. doing what an engineer would do because that we should mm. need to get yeah. them through. Yeah, level two qualified, yeah. He's doing proper jobs. That, that was why I nearly jacked it in at that second year because I could see what your own VQ2 plumbers were getting. Mm. Uh, I thought, shall I hang on for another two years and get my gas or shall I just disappear and deal with wet work? Yeah. Mm. You know, I, I stayed, but it was difficult. It was so hard. Yeah. I racked up so much debt. Yeah. yeah. You know, all the credit cards and everything. You just can't afford to live. Yeah. yeah. I think also, like, talking about, obviously, challenges that women have in the industry, mm. um, I would say that it's not just us that are affected. I think that culture affects, mm. like, apprentices. Mm. And it, it affects everyone, to be honest. Ladies and gents, just a quick one to say a huge thank you to our new headline sponsor, CT1. The Best sealants on the market, voted for by the British public. Not only that, it's made in Britain as well. So go and support a product and a brand that is made in the UK. But I just want to say to you, they've got a brand new product out, which is the BT1. It's a combination sealant and adhesive, like the popular CT1, but it's perfect for keeping a hygienic environment. And it's designed to completely stop the growth of bacteria, microbes, and fungus. And not only that, this stuff is strong. Now it's gonna be available at Travis Perkins, Wix, Juicens, and pretty much everywhere else, so there's no excuse not to go and give it a go. So we're really happy to be partnering with CT1. The, the major thing for me as well, which again, a lot of guys don't seem to understand is, ladies also wanna have a family. Yeah. And trying to fit a family in around yeah. Say if you're, you know, you're doing an apprenticeship and you you do fall pregnant, like how do you? Yeah. And guys don't seem to to yeah. realise some of these things. Obviously, it wasn't until my wife got pregnant, like five years ago, with our first, it sort of hit home to me that actually it's a lot harder for them to forge a career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for the next two years, probably you're going to be the main breadwinner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's sort of yeah. like, you know, yeah. how how do you? So I documented my journey back into construction. Mm -hmm. um, after giving birth mm. the first time and the second time because I wanted to, I was like, I don't know how the story's gonna go, mm. but if I can show that it is possible, mm. it will give hope to a lot of women that drop off and drop out when they want kids. And it is possible. I think possible with smaller companies, family run companies that appreciate you can't be on site seven till seven, like you've got kids. So I think if there are people out there that have got families, then it is becoming more flexible. Mm. Um, I mean, is, is you, the employers that you work with, are they are they sort of aware that you, you know, you've you got to go and collect the kids or is it that... That's the beauty of being self-employed. Yeah, so I've I'm, noticed. Yeah, so I'm self-employed, so it's kind of, I would agree that if I'm doing, um, I mean, I guess, in to be fair, since I've had my two boys, I have been freelance, so I've got clients now. So it's a lot easier to do when you've got clients rather than working for a firm where they're expected to work so many hours. But interestingly, I've got a friend who, um, he's a tradie, he's a plumber, and he's been trying to find four days a week work. And he has been let go from so many jobs because they're like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, we understand you need childcare or you do that on Friday. And I'm like, hold on, there's guys that are affected by this. They want to go and pick up their kids at some point. And it's hard because construction doesn't allow it because it is... The four-day week is beautiful. Oh, yeah, but not many <laughs> people get it, do they? Unless you're on... Yeah, and, and I think it's a shame. Like, why... But I don't know if it would work. I, I just think as well at the moment, I mean, the, the, probably one of the best things that happened to us as a business, well, me as a, as a manager of a business, was COVID made me realise that I actually now can trust my staff to do stuff. Yeah. If I can't, they probably shouldn't be working for me. Like these guys are working from home. Yeah. And actually, stuff carried on. I know mm. it's a bit different when you're an engineer or you're a plumber and you, you need to go to jobs, but actually it sort of highlighted to me that if they need a day off or they've got to go here or they've got this on in the morning, as long as the work gets done, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But how many jobs 
like for big projects mm. you get to especially engineers you get to like half four five and a lot of engineers really are just like just staying the clock down yeah and it's like well and it, 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 everyone looks at each other's like who's gonna go who's gonna go <laughs> last who's gonna go last? and i'm like that culture is terrible like yeah. why yeah. if you've like, if you've I've done seen, the work yeah, yeah yeah like you know there has to be flexibility and i have worked with some awesome big companies that have been like yeah if you want to work two or three days and i know that has um been allowed not just for me as special treatment but to other men there that have got kids, they've got issues. Like, it's life, isn't it? I think mm. we started to realise post-COVID, you've got to have a balance for yeah. mental health, so yeah. do it. And yeah. some companies are doing it, some are not. Yeah. It's just the way it rolls. What, would, what it? would you say then to any companies that are listening or watching to help help push them or nudge them along in the in the right direction that they need to, they need to think about with not just maybe ladies but with guys as well in terms of changing that culture or understanding their workforce better i say empathy yes like, I, I i i've worked with so many guys i've been in meetings when there's been brawls where there's been tears i've been coming out of meetings and there's a guy on a heap on Are the you floor a secret member of fight club <laughs> that's me <laughs> i just like i just go in there and just brawl no yeah. um and i've seen i've seen grown men broken mm. And this is what I like. I always say is that it's not just us that are affected. I've seen young lads that have been so demoralised by the bullying on site, you know, the way they're treated, the, the, the managers, how they've been shouted at in meetings. And it's like, what? It's twenty twenty four. We don't need to be doing this. Like, it's it's not. It doesn't need. You know, businesses can run without shouting um, or without this like ego or you know your place so I think that's probably why you need a few more female managers I think so just to balance it out I mean I'm not saying that we're amazing like catch me on a bad day you don't want me working for you I mean I I also think actually on the flip side of that because I have dealt with some female managers and I feel like they try to be too assertive to sort of show well actually I can do the same job as a a guy Yeah. so you can go the opposite way as well I've had that experience with a lady that was just yeah. I went through management training years ago for when I worked in retail and I was taught that as a manager you had to wear different hats mm. so some days you put this cap on that'd be a kick-ass hat you had to go in fight other days it's your counsellor hat so instead of coming into the meeting and go right you're this your figures are this da, 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 da. what's wrong how are you doing you know that kind of approach so I think that kind of thing with management would yeah. be fabulous as opposed to yeah your big toxic angry yeah raw fella just just on what you were going to there as well with i don't know if you've had this victory but when you've been in the industry for so long i'm probably talking 10 12 years you sometimes feel like when you go into a situation you've got to become a man um i've done it like i've come away after i have come away after something thinking like my body language like how i've approached something i'm like that's not me Mm. but it sometimes kicks in as a survival um in that you know you're going against someone in a meeting that's very you know um dominant and will talk to you like crap um and you've you've kind of socially got to accept that and and rise to the situation, but it's not a nice thing and you shouldn't Mm. have to do it, but you become, I think I did, someone interviewed me and they were like, do you think that you've changed your personality when you've come on site? And I'm like, when I work with people that I'm really comfortable with in the culture and it's great. You can chill, use your voice. Yeah, yeah. But when you go into a toxic environment, you become a bit of an asshole to survive and it is just a survival thing and it's not just us i've seen other men so i think this is really funny i get if you've experienced this I, i've we've been with men on site and they've been like you yeah, like shouting at people and abusing like all different trades and like really being obnoxious and then you'll catch them behind the cabin and they're like hi in love yeah i love you i love you yeah i'll be back soon love you yeah yeah oh, oh yeah oh yeah and i was just like hold on a minute why why do you need to do that like and and i, and I don't yeah and we mean, all become I'm, someone else at work, it's a masking thing it's yeah. ridiculous it's like my it? anti-customer service voice so <laughs> i'm on the phone and it's all my home accent comes out you know it's all very how do you do all of this all of our hand the phone up and ah yeah <laughs> and i do the same yeah. at work yeah the, the nice accent goes and all of a sudden my pitch is dropped to start dropping my t's and my h's and you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I i think though when people are in that situation if they were to detach themselves and think well if my wife who i'm like oh hello snuggles blah, 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 could see how i talk to other people i'd be shocked 
she'd be like... She'd be kicking his ass. Yeah, she'd yeah. be smacking him with a frying pan. Yeah, and most of these guys have got little girls. And, mm. like, sometimes mm-hmm. if there's been a comment made... I had a great comment on YouTube the other day, and they were like, no one would date that comment to you. <laughs> I was like, all right, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Classic and all. But, um, do, you, do, you, do you find on so... Because, again, obviously we had Darcy on the show last time out, and uh, this was even before sort of the OnlyFans thing came, yeah. to, came to pass. Was I, I remember she did a... Um, she does lives on TikTok... I, I know thought, she gets a lot I, of hat. I just thought, I'll have a look on the yeah. comments and see what people are saying. It was like, get back in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah we've ordered sandwich. that, yeah. They yeah. wouldn't say that if they've seen my cooking. No, you say me. I can't cook a baked potato. <laughs> no, it's awful. I can do a roast potato and that's it. I'm cremating water. She should do a yeah. spoo for that where she's just in the kitchen. She's yeah, going, just there's, you. there's your dinner, mate. Yeah. You know, it's just a pile of dog food or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, hats off to her. I've seen her stuff and what mm. she does, how open she is about her open her yeah. only fans. And I'm like, do you know what? Whatever you want to do, yeah, do yeah. it. Well, I said to her, I said, it's not what I do. I said, but no. I always feel like, again, the majority of the time it's guys who get who go at it. And it's like, why is a guy trying to tell a lady what to do? It's just with, an insecurity, with, isn't with, it? With like, her body. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you were together, yeah. you'd have a conversation about it. And, yeah. You know, you'd discuss it. But if, you, if you're nothing to do with it. Yeah. Who cares? What's, yeah. 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 Who, yeah. Who's got time for that? So, yeah. But yeah, she'd made that much money off it. I was like, you do what you want. I tell you. Yeah. If I had the chance to be honest, you know. Well, Mark, Mark, who normally presents his, um, his partner, Kaz, she'd, she'd done a, like a post on social media and she said, me waiting in bed to talk to Mark about me starting my own fans, <laughs> just finding him up. And I, I think she couldn't believe the oh, figures yeah. either. It was yeah. just. Yeah, astronomical. But yeah. I always say each each their own. Like if it doesn't concern you, just what? Yeah, it, it yeah. Doesn't, it does. It doesn't matter. But yeah. any, anyway, what I want to try and get into now is so you've got you've got to where you are. How mm. did the whole podcasting come about and the idea for it? Because obviously the ideas is you know there's not many other people doing and interviewing other ladies and stuff in the trade. Yeah. How so did that side of things come about and the social media sort of stuff? So I never did? lost the love for film and storytelling so when i was on site i had this like i was a massive lover of casey neistat on youtube mm. and um i bought this little camera and i was like do you know i'm gonna start doing vlogs on site so i started doing these like redi- when you watch back now i cringe but setting the camera up secretly no one on site ever knew i was filming and i never really tried to capture anyone else it was just me saying i've done this today just trying to give people an insight into the world of engineering and, and projects um but also giving me feeding my love for just like creating a story um and that kind of got a bit of traction on youtube and then instagram and i was really honest i think that's the one thing that helped is i talked about crying in the port of Lou. i talked about um working with you know drug dealers working with um ex-cons working with mass murderer uh, not mass murderer but someone that had done um time for murder and then i was on site in a field in the middle of nowhere with this person yeah, I, the stories are insane. And I just started sharing them. And I think a lot of women kind of reached out to me, UK and further afield, and were like, oh my God, I share the same experiences. This is what happened to me. But I love, we all love what we do, which yeah. is, is where it all lies as passion. And I love the banter on site. I love working with men. Like, it is great. It's awesome. Mm. Um, and then from Instagram, um, again, I documented being pregnant and working and then I, just traction, isn't it? It's everything that goes with it. But I love connecting with other women and finding, you know, hearing their stories. And I think stories should be told because once a story is told, someone will get inspired and empowered and then maybe follow the footsteps or feel more comfortable that there's other women out there and you create this community. Mm. So she, it was called This Is A Man's World. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's too, you know, it's too on the negative. So I was like, someone said to me one day, why do you do this? And I was just like... I love only fours and horses, and I was like, "She who dares wins." Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was born, and then <laughs> um, I'm now kind of focusing on helping businesses with their social media. So just showing them that the non-traditional marketing methods actually really help, like you guys are doing. Mm. Chat to people. People love stories. That's, that's another thing that I think a lot of brands, uh, myself included, when I first sort of started in the social media, was completely forgot about targeting. Ladies, yeah. I, know, I know from looking at our stats, it's probably about eight or nine percent yeah, female, that's good. but it's still, you know, eight or nine percent of 80,000 on Instagram. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so you've yeah. still got a big chunk of people that actually I was, I was ignoring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just well, not ignoring, but I just, it wasn't even crossing my mind. And it wasn't until probably when I started doing the podcast and then talking to 
ladies on here that you start thinking, well, actually, I've got a, I've, oh, I'm missing, I'm missing a trick here. You yeah. and a lot of the manufacturers. Yeah. I th- I, well, this is this is again another th- thing why I say it's a good idea. The things that you do to bring not just employers, not just other guys on the side, not you know, brands, everybody together to sort of say, well, this is what you should be doing to try and include us to be like I'm here I've yeah. got tiny hands I need gloves too yeah. I need boots that fits yeah. you know like, I need a jacket that's yeah, long enough that trousers don't... that actually cover my backside <laughs> and my feet yeah. you know I hope that waterproof jacket fits <laughs> <laughs> it does I'm at least shout out from the rooftop no but it's true like <laughs> boots hat, hoodie, anything I don't yeah. think the, I think the hoodie's going to be over it's fine just don't worry don't but, sweat but, I'm gangly it's good I, I do Darcy did try the jacket on because she had one last week and it and it fitted so no, it, it is. It is just. <laughs> it's just that. It's about. I think brands are getting more aware of yeah. it. Um, and ignore the fact that I've got pink hair. We don't always want pink stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah the pink stuff. The, yeah. It can grow. Yeah. I got really sent does. pink boots once, and within like ten minutes, they'd lost. I all think the, the thing. I did have I a think... beautiful pair of boots. Yeah, I had to import them from Australia, and they didn't fit. Uh, I was fuming. Uh, <laughs> what what I'm sending them back. Uh, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think a lot of brands still perceive it as oh, like. Barbie pink and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I think Dewalt or I don't know. Someone brought out a pink range of power tools. I don't Mikita. know how they, was it. Mikita? Yeah, I don't know if they sold May that have well. Been in line if, if, with if breast it, cancer awareness. Oh, in that case, yeah. In that case, that's awesome. For, if it's yeah. for yeah, like a core, a limited yeah. edition range. Yeah, I can yeah. get behind yeah. that. But the whole oh, no, no, prof. No, maybe how about design a drill that is smaller, isn't as heavy, because a whole day of us, you know, walloping is going to oh, absolutely knacker and kick off the RSI and carpal tunnel. Yeah. How about start adapting to us? Mm. Because yeah. not every single tradie is going to be your big burly, yeah, you know. Yeah. I, I know so many dudes included that look like a twiglet, don't have the upper body Thanks. strength. I'm not looking at you, <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Hiding they like skip leg day. <laughs> <Shamed>. <laughs> I can't say anything. Mike told my waist about 20 kilos. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this one's like Popeye, the other one, not so much. Yeah. But having stuff that's more adaptable for people would be fantastic. Mm. It just makes it easier for everyone then. Yeah. yeah. So what's what's the aim then with the with the podcast? I know so, obviously you, you're trying to empower other other ladies in the trades and tell yeah. their stories. What's, I, I what's, think, what's, the, what's the future aim? Or So so actually, I did start off with just women in trades, um, but because there aren't that many of us, I was like, this has got to keep going. So it, it does open up now to... Um, I interview women that are just doing, like, cool, sh- cool stuff yeah. and careers that weren't focused... Like mm. they, they weren't told about the careers when they were younger. So, for example, someone that makes, um, someone that's in works in a brewery or is what do you call the people that actually make beer? What are they called? Uh, brewer, a brewer, friend. yeah, brewer, yeah, brewers, brewer. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking of people that have had on uh, a cold water specialist, um, and it's it's just women that the strapline is forged their own path because mm-hmm. I think that's what I kind of did because there was no one. I, I, there was no one before me that I was going, oh, okay, that's the route I take because that person's done that. And I think you'll be doing this now is you'll be setting a pathway for others to follow through. And I think it's so important that we share these pathways so the next generation can go, oh, actually, like Darcy, Brit Layer, I can do that. Yourself, we can do that. And so for me, it's about exposing all different types of stories and making sure people understand that you don't have to have, you know, typical school routes into things or you don't have to have gone to university and a lot of women that I interview haven't and they've fell upon stuff or they've changed careers later on in life and I'm like this is okay this is this is fine and I think for me to get those stories out there is important for the next generation I kind of want the Michelle that was like 12 years old well you're you're now actually going to be the original trailblazers for people going into these. I think our generation, like I feel old now. I see, I see the younger ones come through. It's like Digger Girl, there's Darcy, there's yeah. so many, and I'm like, yes. I feel old as well. <laughs> I'm like, I get when I them. go on TikTok, I certainly yeah, feel old. I'm, I'm like, I'm the same age, and then I'm like, no, I'm 40 this year, Michelle. Like, you, that that shit yeah. sale. But it's important for me to share these stories. Yeah. I mean, where where you work, is there any other ladies working doing doing similar? stuff to you yeah there's a there's a few of us bristol is pretty good for different attitudes with that kind of vary, you know so it's not so horrendous that a lady's turned up yeah. <laughs> <The> clutch <pop-up. laughs> so yeah different attitudes yeah i didn't get the same amount of jip at college as yeah. a lot of others did you know i still had to use the staff toilets you know thanks for that but yeah i wasn't as 
yeah, ostracised, as it were. Yeah. I think it's really like the, the podcast idea for sort of highlighting how ladies have come through in certain things, I think is really good for other ladies who are going to be watching or listening to yeah. it. So I think it's a real... Well, we can share idea. what we've been through and then they can, ex if they're ha having to experience that, they can go, oh, it's not just on my own and how did that person deal with that? Somebody else is showing you the, the yeah, way. the pathway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and in spot, hopefully inspiring. I'd hope, you know, if you've got a daughter out there um, who is not really into sitting down and doing traditional things, if they like going out and getting More dirty. Academic, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, if they like playing football, doing whatever, bit of a tomboy, it doesn't even have to be that, but if they've if they've got an inkling to use their hands, maybe power tools, anything like that, like the biggest, I think, thing, and my parents were really open for me to do anything, the biggest thing is to to say that's okay and not to, to, to push Judge. them in other, and, and mothers as well, that's not just down to dads, but I think dads can have quite a huge impact. Like if your dad's in a trade, oh. And you're picking out tools out of his toolbox, like, okay, you've you've started something here. Mm. Um, when, yeah. yeah, God, when was this have been? The late 80s, so I'd have been knee-high to a grasshopper. It's one of my earliest memories. I remember saying to my dad, when I grow up, I want to be a mechanic. Bless him. He did say, don't be silly, daughter. Girls can't be mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, you know, it was the 80s. A lot of things slid. But, yeah, he was right. I'd have been a lousy mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> but... To know that I always had that mentality as a youngling. Mm. I think that there are little ones now. Yeah, you can spot it early on. Yes. Like, I loved football. I, I was a bit of a tomboy. And, and, and in school, I kind of struggled because I was like, oh, I, I can't. I haven't been diagnosed, but I'm pretty sure I've got ADHD. Yeah. And I, I think <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be perfectly honest. The amount of people we've had on Jackal... Yeah, I, all my guests Who are the would same. like to play with the fidget ring for five minutes? Yes, <laughs> I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently we, we attract each other. Yes. No, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I, I think this is this is the thing. is It's probably a lot more prevalent than what people think, but I also think that there's a lot of kids at school who just need to be mentally stimulated. Yeah. All the time. With something different, they yeah. yearn to, to do different things. Mm -hmm. And get bored doing the same thing. Whereas I find school is very much learn, uh, exam, learn, exam, learn, yeah. exam, recite, square recite. peg in a round hole. Yeah. That and kind and of thing. if you don't yeah. fit that format, then you're automatically just dismissed. And yeah. it's like, oh, well, they're either thick or you know, we they're not academic. They, they never amount to anything. Yeah. Whereas As we're the same generation, you probably had the same thing. You weren't dyslexic. You were, didn't have dyscalculia. You were just dumb. So sit yeah. at the back of the class, shut up, and don't cause a ruck. Yeah. yeah. But it's not until you go to college and they've looked at it and gone, oh, actually, hang on a minute, your numbers keep jumping around on the page. You know, you keep getting things back to front. Like, mm. by the way, you, mm. yeah. Yeah, and and I, I'd say the same for boys. Like, it's not just girls. So I, th I think a lot of guys I speak to on construction sites are saying when I was younger and at school, they'd say, oh, you, you won't amount to anything. You're just working on a construction site. And I'm like, oh, my God, if someone said that to me now, what I would say to kids is, Great. You learn more money. <laughs> you learn way more money than a doctor. And you can get in on two weeks worth of black. Yeah. Yeah. You learn like way more than a doctor. Like I, I, I a couple of years ago I was working with brickies and I was like, how much are you earn? Yeah. Like Yes. It, because it's a it's a trade that ebbs and flows. The only problem but, is it's, it's rained so much, uh, no one's earning anything. That's the best trade. Because they're like, don't work when it's too hot. They were as too cold. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, why would people and also like, oh, you don't need any skills going construction. The amount of times I've thought, why didn't I listen to Pythagoras theorem, yeah. like oh. bearings. When you're an engineer and you've got to do bearings and coastline, like not so much now because the kit does it for you. But I was like, why didn't I listen? Like, I need this now. Tradies yeah. are thick, apparently. And you're there studying the specific heat capacity of water. Yeah. That still gives me the shivers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thank God there's an app for everything. So there's, no, there's not enough credit, is there, really? No. For what, you know, business acumen. If, you, if you're if you a plumber and then you have, like, a few lads working for you, you've got to have really good business acumen. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. And good organisational skills. Yeah. As well as, yeah. Which I haven't got. <laughs> 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 we won't talk about those. We won't talk about those. Are you wasting time? I think that some of you probably are, and I have a solution for you. Nobody wants to do any type of admin. Now, I have a solution for you, and it is called Tradeify. It's a fully automated job scheduling, invoicing, and quoting all in one place. Now, that software is going to save you 12 hours a week and all by using a simple software solution. Now, you can try it for two weeks, absolutely free, no cards needed, and you'll even get support in person from Tradeify themselves. Now, when you're done, 
You can always come back to me and thank me, but just enjoy the extra 12 hours that you're going to gain from just using the software. But we'll move over to you then. Take, take us back. Yes. I don't know how far you want to go back, whether oh. that's leaving, leaving school. Because, again, I'd say... Oh, the school, yeah, I'd, that final one. That's a story and a half. I'd say probably 90% of people go straight from school into doing yeah. something, whether that's trades, trying to become an aspiring actress. Yeah. Um, I'm so still you, waiting for the call. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if somebody's like, oh, we've got a part for you to play. What is it? Construction worker. Yeah. I'll take <laughs> I can it. do that. I'll take it. I can do that. <laughs> i got the high vis that doesn't fit in everything. Yeah, yeah. But. No, um, from school, ee, that final GCSE year, I was living on my own. Okay. Yeah, my mother had kicked me out. My dad wasn't able to support me properly because he was in Spain. Yeah. And I decided to finish my education over here. And yeah, I was completely on my own, winging it, flying by the seat of my trousers. So how, how old are you at this point? 15, 16? Um, she, yeah, she kicked me out when I was 15, got my first place at 16. Yeah, moved out two days before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> so, you were, so you're still trying to do school whilst living, yep. living on your own? Okay. Well yeah. The first day I washed my school uniform by myself. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, everybody's worried about what they're going to wear, you know, what earrings they've got on. And mm. there's me thinking, how the hell do I dry this brown jumper on a storage heater? Mm. Long story short, you don't, and you burn a massive mark on the back of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, school of hard knocks with that one. Um, yeah, just tried uni, tried college, didn't get very far. Um, that was what, when... What did, what did you study? Was it something really random? Uh, Spanish, French and photography. Can you speak Spanish? I should do. <laughs> I'm so but I can't remember any. Do you know what I love about English people or people from the UK is because everyone speaks English. Oh, as don't soon as you've left school, you're like... My Spanish dad bonjour. is mortified. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the accent, but I don't have the grammar to can, back it up. Can you, can yeah. you do the, like, bath? Barcelona. Barcelona. You know, <laughs> claro que sí. Yeah, where it's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even do that. Well, that's sort of... My surname is Perez Garcia. Because yeah. so, you're, yeah. you're from Portuguese. Give us okay, some, that give was us really some, good. Give us some Portuguese, G. I don't know, just say my name is Gonzalo and I'm from Portugal. My name is Gonzalo. Yeah, he's got the vibe, he's got the he's vibe. Got the vibe. Yeah. Mucho gusto. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, like... Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anymore. I'll just... I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, did that, failed that, thought, what the hell am I going to do? Did photography for two years, just because we had to stay in education. I'm always fascinated when it gets to these, because people just got some wild so cards. The yeah. weirdest qualifications, Spanish like, why? and photography. Like, so. why? <laughs> uh -huh. I did the photography because I needed an extra, you know, uh, A level. Uh, okay. But yeah, did that, pulls that up, and went into the world of work, thought, what the hell am I going to do? I'm trained for nothing. What good jobs have you had? Come on. Oh, heck. Um, my favourite one was working for the MOD as a forklift driver, Ooh. driving around um, on a fueling depot, so moving jerry cans, that yeah. kind of thing. That was great. Um, the how, how did, how did, uh, it always fascinates me how people end up in some of these. Like I worked, I worked in a dairy factory for Muller. And I, like, I was like, how did I end up there? I didn't last very long, but I was like, how have I ended up? You know, when you, just, you sort of look around and you think, how have I got in here? It was working at a call centre and I was let go because I might have slightly insinuated that one of the customers was a male chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you're not allowed to do that. Uh, yeah, so I did my six months unemployment, got my forklift ticket and, yeah, never looked back. I haven't done a conventional job since. Mm. Yeah. Um, did a lot of warehousing. From that, got into uh, so the merchants. Your, your phobia of the warehouse. Yeah, that was where yeah the PTSD from boxes and yeah. <laughs> being in a cold warehouse comes from. Yeah, did that work for merchants, and I basically had a Pl plumbing merchant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got a stupid idea. Become I thought, plumber. why don't I do what they do? He's dumb as a bag of rocks. So how did how did how did that come about then? So you, you're working in the plumbers merchants. What? What it was makes a stupid it, what makes idea. I hated the did place some, that did, I was working. Did, did somebody mention it to you? No. Did, no. no, I just, just thought, oh, why not? It was, again, one of my dumb ideas. Mm. <laughs> and, yeah, went to night school, changed employers, worked for a plumber's merchant that time, 
And yeah, got a tip off from one of the local firms saying... That's probably a good idea, actually, if you want yeah. to become oh, an apprentice. Just yeah. to go and work at a merchant. And it yeah. was fabulous. I didn't have any of the... And you get to know which ones are the billions. Yeah. Well. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, can't they get to know for, you as well. Can't work for him, yeah. Yeah, I'm not working for that one and that one. Da, da, da. Yeah, you get to spot them. But it's a great education in what the parts were. So you know your male lines, your yeah, fittings, yeah. you're there faffing about you on parts pri- arena. You know the price of them as well. Mm. Yes. Magic crate. Tap, tap. Mm. <laughs> So, yeah, that was how I got in. Got the apprenticeship and never looked back. So random. It's a night school, though, whilst working. That was a killer. Being at work for six o'clock in the morning, finishing at two. Wallop, and that was before I could drive as well. I used to be one of those people whizzing around on a micro scooter. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I'd have to travel about seven miles to work. On a micro scooter? Yeah. Ten miles to college. Lovely. Now so you'd be on a power drive. <laughs> oh, those flaming scooters. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank the gods I've now got a driving licence. Yeah, because when I first came out of my time being all, you know, qualified in ECS, da, 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 trying to do that job on the bus. Yeah. Yeah, you get to your client's house, you go to change a fan, and then you find out that the merchants gave you the wrong fan, and now you have to catch three buses to get to the place and then come back again. Yeah, that, that was not a good day. Mm. <laughs> I lost a lot of time oh, on that yeah. one. I mean, how long, how long were you doing that then without a licence? Because that's... that's oh, for that's a- about a year... I think basically every little bit of spare bit cash was going towards deposit and everything. And yeah. Yeah. I love my little van though. Cause She's I think, a good girl. Because I think people don't realise. I know, I know obviously before you mentioned that you came out, you, you were contemplating sort of jacking in the mm. apprenticeship, uh, pr- apprenticeship because of the, the money situation. Mm. Then people don't sort of see, well, actually, she's come out of that. She's got a shit ton of debt but then she's still getting three buses or whatever or a micro mm. scooter yeah. to actually get to a customer's house and done that for a year. It was and the these, stubbornness. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. The, no, but these, these are the things where I love talking to people on here because people will talk to you on social media and won't have a clue about that sort of stuff that you've done. Yeah. And I always feel like if anybody is listening and watching this and they're going through a similar situation, they'll be like, oh, do you know what? Actually, I can message because uh, she's gonna, she's gonna know. I'm in She'll it. know the bus routes around Bristol. Yeah, I can get you down from you know Bedminster to. Yeah, take, the fo- yeah. take the forty three. Get on the number five. Oh, I'll never get on that one. <laughs> but you, but you know what I mean. I, I feel like it, people can relate to it, and that's the whole point of doing of doing these things. So you get your license then. Yeah. And then what sort of happens from there? What's what's happened for you in your life since you've a become qualified, b got the car or the van? How's it? How's it sort of changed things for you and? It has improved my life in ways that I never thought would happen. Mm. You know, for the first... I'm I'm not going to get emotional. It's fine. (laughs) But for the first time in my whole adult life, I can financially support myself. Mm. I don't have to rely on anybody. I don't have to... And how how old were you? I I I never like to ask a lady her age. Oh, I started training when I was 30. Yeah. So when you're sat there in the class and the... Training provider asks, have you got your GCSE certificate? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, what? well, it's somewhere in the warehouse, you know, with the Ark of the Covenant. And some wait. little fella puts his hands up and goes, miss, I haven't done my GCSEs yet. Uh, I was waiting for you to go, no, but I can speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the say? Spanish? <laughs> no speak <Dad>. Espanol? <laughs> no, no, Dad's going to listen to this. Don't drop that one. Well, at least you didn't come out with O levels because that's yeah. a whole other. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, then you know you're, then you know yeah. you're old, don't you? But no, I mean, it's always fascinating for me because somebody's 30 and again the amount of questions we get that co- people come through on messages like um, is it too late to start no never. no never no. never never but again i yeah. think it's great that you've been so open to say well actually it was really hard i had a load of debt having to get loads of buses mm. took me a while to get to this point but it's now yeah. but now obviously saying to somebody i can now actually fully support myself mm. that day where i finally phoned up that credit card company and said right i want to pay that off they went, are you, are you sure? That's like a grand... Yep, yep, do it. Poof, gone, get rid. Mm. That freedom is amazing. Yeah. And then just being able to start... Actually, I've actually got savings for the first time in my life. Mm. It, it's, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Because that's, that, again, this is why I find it so odd that schools don't push trades. Because... Yeah. Because you, we're all you, dumb, you, don't forget. No, but I feel like... Yeah, it, it's insane. But rich and dumb. <laughs> no, but I, I, I feel like so. if, if schools actually took, like... A sort of new approach to it. I mean, it's the same with like chefs and stuff like that. You've mm. got to go to like a food college, but again, there's not many of them. If schools actually 
split it down the middle and went, right, okay, you can either go the academic route or you can learn a trade. Yeah. And then they were people were coming out and they're fully qualified and they're actually they're actually contributing to the workforce rather than just contributing to going to university mm-hmm. mm. to make more money and milk you with more money. Mm. I feel like society would just be a lot better in general. Yeah, well, I've, we have a lot of engineers. Like I've had a few apprentices. I've had both. An apprentice that's just come out of school, mm. they've been amazing because yeah. they're not getting paid much, but they want to learn. And then I've worked with graduates. And when, it, when I've had a graduate, my heart sunk <laughs> because they come, they've got like... They expect the expectations there, isn't it? They want the watch, the coffee... The BMW One Series, <laughs> oh, and that's me. That is. They, they don't want to be on what the tools. What car am I driving? <laughs> and you say to him, "You're like, what's wrong with that curb line?" And the mm. curb line is like this, and they're like, "I don't know. I'll just get the drawing." I'm like, "No, just look at the curb line." <laughs> Like, you know, and they want to be in management, but they don't want to go and talk to the lads and and set out drainage. Like, they want to get in, in the in you the trenches. To, you, have to, you have to start at the very beginning. Yeah. I think if you skip a juncture, a people don't respect you, but b yeah. actually sort of handi- hand- handcuffs you because you, you you haven't got that experience if yeah. something does go wrong. But they, and this is not every graduate, but they've got a huge amount of debt. I have to be really careful what I say here because my husband's a, um, a lecturer, so he's like, don't talk me out. <laughs> <job. laughs> don't mention anything to do yeah, with me. Yeah, Thank you. I need a job. Um, but... I, for apprentices, I love is, it. Is, is he a university lecturer as well? Yeah, right. but he's in sports. So like, uh, they just, you know, okay. wear tracksuits and stuff. Um, <laughs> you can really say that. <laughs> but with, a, like, I do think there is a route for a graduate if you want to do civil engineering and go into structural and whatever. But if you want to be a setting out engineer or a land surveyor, then go and seek out an apprenticeship because you will learn. It's like you'll get someone on a construction site and they've got so much book knowledge and then a digger swinging round, and they're like, oh, uh, like they duck. stood right by it, or, and they don't know, do you know what, they just don't know anything. Mm. Applicable knowledge is a beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. get, get your hands dirty. I, like, I've I had an apprentice once, and I, I was pegging out a road, so I'd set this road out, and the guys were coming with the stone, and they were, time is money in construction, so you've always got someone shouting at you, and I was like, right, we've got to get these profile boards in, so here's a sledgehammer. And like I'm not huge, but I'd got like you. Oh, a any big chance right. with a sledgehammer? I'm a there, big, you know. I've got a big right. Decommissioning <laughs> is my speciality. Yeah, I got a big right bicep at this point, and I was going around smashing these pegs in, and I said, "Oh, you go ahead and you do like the next 10. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> I was like, and because my my first experience with a hammer yeah. when it was one of the jobs was I was down a hole on the Nottingham tram, so I was like two meters below the footpath. And I never forget this guy because he's just such a character. And he shouted at me like I was tapping in these little pins, and he was like, "Michelle." I was like, "Yeah." No, actually, he called, Smack it. <laughs> he called me someone else because he never got my name right. And he was like, maybe like Cassandra. He's like Cassandra. I was like, "Yeah." Like looking up at this hole, and he was like, "I want you to hit that." Like you've just walked in on your boyfriend with some <laughs> other woman now, and I was just like, "Oh." <laughs> she rush slash Hulk smash yeah. Abbott. I can imagine you yeah. doing that and you're like, oh, I've hit a gas gas yeah, point. Well, yeah, <laughs> gas point. A story. Yeah, two minutes later he's lifted the ladder and I'm stuck down there. But that's that. Yeah, but and it's like it is a rite of passage uh, to to get to that point. But I think anyone that's an apprentice can get a little bit downhearted because the money. Oh I'm God, like, yeah. You've got no debt though. Like I'm, I'm in certain situations. Yes. Whereas graduates have a huge amount of debt. And there's this bit of, I think there's different routes that work for different people. Yeah. Like if you want the uni experience, I went to uni, so I'm able to say that like I loved the three years of not doing a huge amount. Three years of party. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was very fortunate to have been yeah. supported. And I know a lot of people aren't, but well, this, equally get on the tool. This is the thing. Imagine you've gone to uni, then realised that it's not for you because you were heavily pushed through yeah. college and school. Yeah. And then you need to go into a trade. Yeah. And then you've got more debt trying to survive than... Oh, yeah, I'm still paying yeah. off the student loan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, I, think, I, think, I, think, yeah, yeah. I think most people do for yeah. a very long time. Just quit. Like, quit. If you're in your first or second year... Yeah. Um, like, and you're not sure it's for you and you want to go into trade, why not give it a go yeah. and, and work but, experience? But, but again, at university, I don't ever remember. And this is the thing is, rather than having dropout rate at uni, wouldn't it be good to recycle those that don't want to do a uni, like an actual academic uni course, to say, well, this is what else you could do to try and bring them back in. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got, like, if it was split, like I said, half uh, academic and half vocational, so you've actually yes. got these colleges on site with other universities and then go and uh, learn brick brick laying stone masonry farriers whatever it is yeah people are probably like well actually i can still stay at uni still have that experience but learn a trade yeah be hands-on yeah i think the amount of engineers i've met that have physically had their hands on setting out kit Mm. 
uh, has been like two weeks on a course where they've had to share it with someone else. And then when they're on it every single day, having to set a construction site out, they don't have the skills. And uh, you can't get that in, but you can in an apprenticeship. You, you can read all in. the books you like, but after you've just cut into 22 more mains. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. your mate hasn't turned off. Yeah. <laughs> like, then yeah. what do you do? Yeah. And also the, the social side of it. When you're at uni, it's like you're at uni, you're kind of in this cohort of people and then you get on site, someone's like shouting at you. Yeah. You've got, you know, you've got to it's be a big, able to It's a big way. I, I feel like universities sometimes don't prep you. For the big for the, world. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. You I, know it's, I know it's so cliche, yeah. but it's yeah, just, right. you, you, the work environment in a university environment, completely different. Yeah. You're in cotton wool and everything's all nice and I can go out for a drink. Don't worry yeah. about turning up on Monday. Yeah. You'll be all right. Just, just have another nap, you know. <laughs> yeah. Watch the catch up with these standards. Yeah. Yeah, we'll Neighbours and some baked beans. You'll yeah, be fine. Yeah, yeah. Do, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, I don't know. But one thing I wanted to ask you then is, so you've you've got your, you know, your big shiny apprenticeships done. You've got your, your van or your car. And obviously now you're sort of paying everything off. What's the what's the future plans for you then? What is what is what is what would you like to do now? You've got to that point where you've got your. Um, at the moment, I'm just happy doing what I'm doing. I love my job. You know, it has its bad days, of course. You know, you sat in the van, it's peeing it down with rain. It's you cold, you knackered. You've got 15 jobs to do with one pair of vans, but every day is a challenge. Would, so, you, would you say that's the first job then that you've truly loved? Yes. Because when it's the middle of winter and your poor old lady, she's waited until Monday, her boiler's frozen over, she's turned blue and you've been able to fix that. You've mm. brought heating back into her home. She can now have a bath. She can now defrost. She can get the heating on. That gives you an insane level of just job satisfaction because you've made a huge difference to that person's life. Mm. You know, think how cold and how much pain they would have been in, and you've just fixed it. Mm. You know, so I'm happy just doing that for a few years, and yeah, then see where the world takes me. Okay. Because I've spent a lot of years <laughs> scrapping to get to this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just happy to try and learn as much as I can. Yeah, I so think, just to get better at the job. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's good. Yeah. So what we tend to do around about this time is I sort of go to. It's almost like a bit of a Jerry Springer final thought where I sort of say do you want to drop any sort of knowledge or you could shamelessly plug yourself and say I've got these hobbies. <laughs> whatever it is one thing one thing we are we going to do a trade legends discount for? yeah totally yeah so yeah sh- yeah got, there'll be a discount for Michelle's got some of these this. lovely yeah hoodies. so so it's yeah in relation to the podcast there's just hoodies and tees to kind of help inspire women um so, so if, yeah. you, if you do want to support some lovely ladies women in construction then yeah. uh Get yourself one of the head over and we'll give you a, a we'll awesome put, discount. We'll put some little code on there as well and they'll yeah. be on the discount page. Definitely. So um, anything that you want to offer advice or you want to specifically talk about one thing that's really important to you or a cause that you think, you know, people should know about or anything like that or even saying to people, well, look, I started at 30, I'm now however old, you know, don't give up. This is what I would suggest to do. You know, it can be, can be absolutely anything. So. If it is for self-improvement, there is no idea too dumb. Mm. You know, get the qualifications, get that job, keep fighting. Because you will get to that point eventually where you can, you know, you reach that career point where you can just fly yeah. with it. What would you say to your younger self then now? Now that you know what you know now, because no doubt there's going to be somebody who's who's super wild like you, who's moved in, <laughs> burnt their school uniform, has decided that they uh, want to scoot around town on a on a scooter what would you what would you say to your younger self if you were if you were having to talk to to her keep going just keep going you get your dark days but once you reach the end Mm. of it it's the relief is amazing once you you spent those so many years scrapping fighting endeavoring and then you have that freedom it's brilliant i can do what i want now within reason but you know I mean, you have that freedom you can go where you need to i can have holidays mm. you know i wasn't able to do that for years and then i'm off wandering around rome yeah. with my other half you know yeah. seeing those places that i wanted to see when i was a little i mean men- thing. i mean mentally as well i don't think people realize how draining it is when you're worrying about debt you haven't you, you have to rely on 
public transport and other people you to haven't to eaten places. properly for days you haven't eaten properly you yeah. don't have much money you're still trying to get up and like motivate yourself to go to something where you know actually this is really causing me a struggle so i think like it's good advice to say to people is like it's not always going to be no that, it won't that always be that hard channel yeah. that stubbornness for good rather than for evil don't bite yourself up about it because today went wrong tomorrow's going to tomorrow's different yeah yeah so well, well done from from me anyway because that's a pretty crazy story to yeah yeah <laughs> that's so. the abridged version and, and, you, and you've got and you've got there so that's yeah. that's good what about you then michelle is there any yeah kind of i mean wax lyrical about anything for us or i definitely think i would love to kind of and this extends to obviously you because with what an incredible story um is just say to other women if you can like share your story because you might not know it but you are massively helping everyone by just doing that and inspiring other women so i'd say that you know get out there share your story if you can and you feel comfortable doing it um and then if i could change the industry overnight i'd just say to anyone that works on site or in a trade like just have a bit of empathy um you know you never know what someone else is going through um why they're reacting why they're doing um make sounds very like let's make the world a better place no, but, <laughs> but do you know what i mean like i think it needs that i yeah. think i think we just need a bit of let's just take off the sharp corners yeah. um and i think it, it would just help everyone i think it's an awesome it, trades construction is is awesome mm. and why would you not choose a career yeah. in it for all the advantages i mean so. a lot of guys talk about mental health but then on the flip side they're just going at each other on sites and you think yeah you can't you can't profess to be one thing and then on the other side and i feel yeah. like guys just they get so wrapped up in their own bubble yeah. that they forget sometimes that actually they've got a lady on site or whatever and yeah. but even even like internal to themselves mm. like you see guys go home like demoralized and mm. and something's been said like well, it, that's, that's why suicide's such a yeah. high, high thing in men, yeah. in men in construction yeah i went to an it? event last year and it was a uh, petrol forecourt and they opened with this guy that was incredibly happy, like the person on site that was always helping everyone out and like never had a bad day, just went home and committed suicide. Um, and it was the stress of the job. Mm. And it's like, they, you know, how many times could that be avoided? I think construction is quite high on the suicide rate. That's one of the, I think Being in construction and being in the van all the time, it is very, very easy to hide anything that is wrong with you. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've got a couple of medical issues that I won't bore you with now, but you end up in so much pain, you are in tears going to your next job. Mm. Mm. And then you your face, to, yeah, the mask yeah. goes yeah, on. Yeah. Hello there, I'm here to service your boiler. You, you, know, it's you mean so you're, you're born with voice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Oh, nice so. to see you. <laughs> what is here? Yes. <laughs> well, the, the, the other thing as well is if you're working on your own sometimes. On the loneliness, yeah. Yes. You know, you haven't got some, like, whereas if you've got a couple of people there, you, you can sometimes vent off them Bounce, or, have yeah. a bad yeah that is why i've absolutely loved instagram people on it have been amazing mm. it's like um holly maria my besties from back in the day it's you're in constant contact all day and it, it makes you so much easier you know you've had a customer that's done this that and the other you know where this is going on at home but to have that support even though they're not with you but to have them online mm. is amazing and i love that so the whole ladies supporting ladies thing is brilliant because it's yeah. so easy for us to start knocking each other down well I, yeah i don't i don't i don't get that i don't understand yeah. it um yeah, I mean, there is a there is a, it's the same with guys. There's a lot of that sometimes. Yeah, I don't I don't get it. I don't, I, I don't mean I've really experienced it, but I know others have. And I'm like, why yeah. would you climb the ladder to then pull the ladder up? Yeah, yeah. behind like, you. Just help. Just help where you can. Um, yeah, especially with the whole man and lady thing. Mm. You know, there is a there can be a bit of us versus them. It's mm. no, we're just tradies. Yeah. We all have the same problems. You know, we're all mm. sat in the van with our heads going like squirrels. Mm. Just you get do you get a comment like always get comments of like oh they just hate men and blah, blah, blah. Yes. <laughs> like the probably comment section for this might be like oh. that and I say well I married one I don't yeah. hate them I've got two boys like I actually and I've been seventeen years in the industry I love men I think I think the the thing with guys is because everything and I think it's just people in general everything's been the same for so long yeah oh, change the, the people don't oh, yeah. like change yeah, and I right, always yeah. and I always feel like. The, the women in construction thing it's just been gradual i don't ever think it's been rammed down but some guys oh it's rammed down your throat yeah. this We've is rammed down your throat blah 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 <laughs> it's rammed down. you know there's always one that's like 
you know, everything's a conspiracy. <laughs> but I wouldn't <laughs> be here if it yeah. wasn't you, for the support you, of my tutors yeah. from back in the day, the lads that I work yeah. with, yeah. you know, it's, some of them go above and beyond. Yeah. You know, it's seven o'clock. They should be, you know, winding down for the day. Yet they're still coming out to help me with an expansion vessel that just won't stop leaking. Yeah, yeah I'll never forget that one. But but you get you get good and bad in everything. Don't yeah. get me wrong. There are going to be some ladies that yeah, are like yeah. ultra feminist and you yes. you misogynistic bastard. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're going to get that. Quiet you know, man. But the majority, yeah. I'd say, not again. Ninety percent. Oh, it's awesome. It's yeah. just yeah, it's awesome. And 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 the support. And I think that's why. People like us have been in the industry for so long and we've not left is because it is awesome. And people might say, well, why would the 10% suck it up? Yeah. But I'm like, no, the 10% and is really dark. One, one thing I want to add is as well is if there is ladies where they are getting a bit of grief, mm. just move, go where you appreciate yes. it. Yeah. Than, yeah, which is easier said than done. So, so is, I've yeah. always done that because I've always been freelance. So I've just been like, do you know what? And I've had not had to move, to be honest, that often at all, really. Um, but... If you, I think this is where on the one of the women's groups, um, there's a lot of issues is that people do have mortgages to pay. They've mm. got into this job and they're in, I know I spoke to uh, some girls on a project that I did last year, female engineers, and they were like, I can't move companies because I'm part of a, like, a graduate scheme. Uh, but this, So there, I think there, it's not as easy, but I would say... Well, some, in, some employers pay for you to do your course and then you have to give them a set like amount of years, years yeah. back. But yeah. if, if you've got someone that you're struggling with and you're not getting anywhere... Yeah, hundred percent. We not are worth as rare it. as unicorn go. shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like Just that go. quote of the century. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's true though. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But yeah, from uh, from me anyway. I appreciate you coming on and sort of giving the background to people so people could understand the situation a bit more. I personally, I don't see it because in the office these guys will back me up. Is it's very split, uh, men and women. And I, I'll be perfectly honest. Actually, the women run the office. They yeah. sort of give us a lot of grief and banter <laughs> and stuff like that. And I feel like I don't notice it so much. So it's always good to get people on to share their experience so that other people are listening and watching, other young girls thinking, I want to get into the trade. Yeah. That they that they know that it sometimes can happen, but yeah. also that it's not as bad as what you think. You it's know. getting better. Yeah, it's yeah. getting better. That's the positive. Yeah, Compare it now better. to 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, yeah, so much better. We're not yeah. there yet, but one day... Pff, no. Yeah, yeah, that door will be open and he's just like, oh, Hugh again, come on, in the house, yeah. whatever, as opposed to, ah, Yes, yeah, yeah. what you want is effectively in 10, 20 years for someone to walk past a site. And it's just normal. And it's just yeah. like, yeah, and I think it is in Scandinavia. Mm. But I think they've got they've got it to a point where it's like, oh, we don't have a problem. Like, they yeah. really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting into the Spanish stuff. I was like, oh, we but do you know what I mean? It's not, uh, that was horrendous. <laughs> you have to edit that out. Um, that's, that's, that's in that's the trailer. That's <laughs> Like yeah. my Norwegian accent. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're very good yes. from yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They have it right, don't they? You got into your acting career yeah. there, hadn't you? God, yeah. <laughs> Let me just wait for that call still. Be right back on it. But yeah, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks and I think, for uh, Yeah, thank you. Because being able to offer our voice is huge. Well, yeah. The other so. thing is as well now is... He might have another guest for you. A friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh 100%. Yeah, and if there's anyone out there... She Dares Wins podcast, um, like Cause I say. Because that's another thing as well, is I always think... You can scour the internet as much as you want, but there might be somebody that goes, oh, I'd really like for you to interview yeah. such and such. Yeah. So I always think that's a, a good way of doing yeah. it as well. Yeah, so. I spend 90% of my time just searching, like, awesome women, and, yeah, it's it's incredible. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.